hi guys welcome to another video uh, actually a few days back i got a request of uh, showing these two jcls uh, where i actually do uh, uh, this uh, compilation and execution part so while showing one COBOL program i think actually i did this compilation and then i went to this other uh, uh, execution jcl and i compiled uh, execute executed it but today in today's video i will show you in uh, elaborately i will show you how this compilation process actually works and how this execution process works so as as we already know that in cobol you cannot directly execute a cobol program okay in mainframe because uh, mainframe does not understand this language we have to convert this language into object code which is also called load module so whatever code we write that is in basic english language that is not understood by this mainframe system we have to convert it into its equivalent object code okay so to convert it we have this compilation process for this we have to use jcl and all obviously we have uh, utility to convert it and finally while executing we will execute it taking that load module that means the converted source code we will take that and we will execute it so that mainframe takes it it understands it it takes it and, and it executes it so whatever you have written in your program will ultimately be reflecting in your output just the way of execution is uh, different that there are two processes compilation and execution so uh, here uh, in my system, when I show you, I have one compilation JCL. So this is one compilation JCL. As you all know, this is a catalog proc. So this is the compilation JCL and here we have a catalog proc. So you can see job card then JCL order equal to uh, this proc library I have inside which I have a catalog proc, a proc I have. So and below this, there are four members. You can see copy lib, load lib, source lib, member. These are all symbolic parameters, okay? Meaning inside this catalog proc, okay? Inside this catalog proc, inside this catalog proc, there are many uh, symbolic parameters with copy lib, load lib, source lib, and member. What uh, the ones which I am overriding from the JCL, okay? So for that, first of all, let me go to this proc library. What is the name of this member? So I'll open it. Okay, the first one. So you can see this is a catalog proc. Inside this proc, First of all, we have some symbolic parameters. So we have symbolic parameters both in PROC and also in JCL. So just ignore about the symbolic part for now. So let's go to this COBOL. Okay, the first step where I am using this utility called IGYCRCTL. Okay, IGYCRCTL is the utility using which we uh, compile the COBOL program. Okay, now here you can see in CSIN. I have taken CCN DD DSN equal to M person source lib within bracket M person member. Meaning this is the input which I am taking for the compilation part. Where is it coming from? If you go to the proc library, you can see for source lib some error dot SR syllabus is mentioned. Okay. Which actually uh, is not present. This is not a proper library, but since in the JCL also source library is getting overridden. Here I have written the actual library name matsc.jab.cobol.sourcelib. So this is the final library, the main one. So whenever you have symbolic parameters in both proc and the JCL, the proc, uh, mem proc overriding part will be uh, ignored. The JCL will be taken into account. So since I have overriding parameters in both proc and JCL, so these are invalid. These procs are invalid. So so for this, so for this, first of all, I have taken source lib and member as input. So, so what is source lib? So this is the source lib, matsc.jb.cobol.source lib, src lib, and member is suppose addition. This is the name of a COBOL program which I have written, okay? So these are the two inputs I have taken. There is one more thing called syslib dddsn equal to person copy lib, meaning the COBOL program that I want to execute inside this program, if there is any copy lib which is copy book which is getting used is there any copy book which is getting used that means if there is any file uh, whose structure is defined in the copy book or any coding part is defined in the copy book that thing 
that copy book should be present inside this copy lib .copy lib inside this library that copy book should be present and that also i'm taking as input okay then i am creating one then i'm creating one temporary data set you can see sys lin dds uh, uh, name equal to ampersand ampersand load set. so when you have double ampersand this is a temporary file so this temporary file is getting created from the first step okay so this is the first step this is igy crctl using which we convert the source code into object code okay so source code is converted into object code taking source lib member and copy lib as input so in the jcl you can see four things copy lib load lib source lib member out of which three are input copy lib is input because in your program if you are using any copy book that should be defined here source lib is the library where you have written the program and member is the name of your COBOL program so these three are input output of this compilation jcl is your load library where the object code will, will be generated now from the first uh, this one from the first step from the first step we have created we have taken source lib member and copy lib and we have created a temporary data set whose name is load set i have given so there is another step which is called link edit so this is the mandatory part in uh, compilation generally while talking we say that igy crctl is used to compile cobol into uh, source code into ex um, uh, object code okay but after igy crctl you will always see there is one link edit uh, step what is link edit it will you can see on a higher you can say on a high level whatever object code is prepared or whatever object code is created that it will uh, link together or it will make it executable it you can say that in a high level so ieb iewb link or sometimes it is iewb also these uh, utilities are used to link edit a cobol program now from the first step whichever loads uh, um, temporary file i have generated where this object code is present that only i'm taking as input in the second step here syslin ddds name equal to this one this i'm taking as input and finally i'm creating this load uh, output okay so sys l mod ds name ampersand load lib ampersand member meaning ampersand load lib is this one matac.jb.cobol.loadlib1 inside which uh, I, I will create a member with the same name since I am taking ampersand member meaning whatever the name of the source program is with the same name an object code will be generated in this library why am I taking this because old because this library is already existing it's not a new library it's uh it's an existing library so this people old inside this library with the same member name one object code will be generated so this is the actual your object code okay this object code should be used while executing the cobol program now <clears throat> if you go to the execution jcl here so here actually i have to write this program name so it's very easy just this normal jcls only okay just the job card then step name exec pgm since it's a cobol program the name of the program now this program name is we always keep it as the same as the source code this is actually the object code okay okay don't get confused this the name is same that does not mean this is the source code this actually is the object code and since it's a cobol program and it is not a system defined program where it is already present in the system we don't have to provide any location for it since it is a cobol program we have to provide the location where this program is present now since it's this object code uh, is present in this load library because after compilation we have generated the load library inside load lib one so we have to write step lib dd dsn equal to matse dot jb dot cobol dot load lib one now after execution of this jcl the system will try to find this load module inside this library if it finds it will execute it otherwise it will fail with s806 load module not found okay then you have to provide the proper load library or you have to see whether the load module is generated there or not so this is how the execution part is handled so before doing any cobol uh, executions we have to always think that first of all you have to convert your source code into object code you have to generate the object code in a load library that lo load library you have to take into account while executing and also you have to use the members so Finally, it will be executed and whatever you have written in the program, whatever the expected output is, you can see in the output. Okay, that is how it generally works. So 
hope uh, please let me know of any topic uh, which you want me to make videos on and uh, i will make videos so please subscribe to this channel and thank you let's meet in the next video